Hi guys, it's time again for another game of Terra Mystica. I'm set up again on the Digidice app against three AI players. And there are only two factions I've not made a playthrough video of yet. One of those is the Fakirs and the other one is the Dwarves. So let's have a look at the round scoring tiles. In round one, we need to be building um, temples. We get four points for each temple we build. In round two, we need to be completing towns, which I don't think I'm going to be doing. Five points if we manage to do that. In round three, two points per dwelling. In round four, five points for sanctuaries or strongholds. In round five, three points for a trading post. And the final round, two points for a dwelling. And let's have a look at the scoring bonuses here. Immediately we can see six, four, two. There's plenty of coins. Two and a one. Good number of workers. It's good to have the uh, sanctuary stronghold scoring bonus. Actually, we have four scoring bonuses here. We also have the trading post scoring bonus, the dwelling scoring bonus, and the shipping level scoring bonus as well. And power, we've got two power bonus cards as well. So go back to the um, round tiles here, round scoring tiles. So a temple in round one. I think I'm going to go for the Fakirs. What else will be picked? Yeah, the shipping level scoring tile. So the mermaids could be picked. And we've got brown cult bonuses and blue cult bonuses. That leans towards mermaids, swarmlings, halflings, and darklings. So as I'm the first player to pick, if I pick the Fakirs, obviously a weak faction, there's a risk that um, I'm going to get uh, um, a red a red faction or a brown faction picked. And as there's uh, scoring bonuses for brown for the cult track in the uh, round scoring tiles here. So it's, it's quite possible we're gonna get halflings or cultists. If we do, we'll try to stay away from them, but that will also be very difficult because being the fact is we want to be sort of centrally located as well. So, um, Normally, I would pick the Fakirs if I was in the fourth spot and I could see that uh, I'm going to get no bother from any of the other races previously chosen. So the Fakirs are not a, not a faction that are often chosen um, because they're pretty much well known to be the weakest faction in the game. But um, scores are adjusted accordingly. So I think the Fakirs may start on 33 points or so. But because they of their, their special ability, that's the carpet flight that allows them to sort of jump over um, spaces to um, um, lay dwellings um, at distant places. Their, their dwellings tend to be uh, quite scattered around, and so it can be quite difficult to form towns with them as well. So let's choose them and see who we get as neighbors anyway, even though normally... I would uh, pick them only in a specific situation and when I'm fourth player. But uh, let's just see who we get. So we've got uh, green, blue, and we've got um, gray. So I think we've done quite well. No red and no uh, brown, as I was indicating before, that uh, could happen. So we've done well. The mermaids have been chosen because of that uh, scoring tile that uh, we saw, the shipping bonus scoring tile. So. We've done well uh, going in in first place and we, we, we rode our luck and we got it. So we got what we wanted. So I'm thinking of going for the two yellow spots in the central peninsula. Um, I can see that if we open up our game board, we can see that um, red and brown are easiest for us to terraform. Only one spade to terraform those two hex, those two colored hexes to uh, yellow. And we can see here red, brown, red. So this would be the easiest place to form a town. Um, the town forming bonus is in round two, and we're not gonna be forming a town by round two. Um, but that's where we will form a town. In round one, we're gonna build a temple. In round two, we will just continue to develop that town um, in round three, we'll um, maybe be doing a double dig there and laying down a couple of dwellings. 
and then we'll get our stronghold in this round. Um, perhaps I prefer these two to be the other way around, or a double dwelling and have, uh, yeah, in an ideal world, I'd have a temple in the first round, trading post in the second, then maybe a sanctuary stronghold in the third, so I could build my stronghold. And then, um, not sure what I'd go for in the fourth, perhaps trading post and then dwelling, dwelling, um, or any combination of uh, trading post dwellings in the final three. But to get that kind of uh, combination, a perfect combination of uh, round scoring tiles and no neighbors um, for territory, uh, terraforming uh, hexes, I think we could uh, be playing games all year and, and not come up with a perfect setup. So we've got to go for something. Let's go for this. And we're very lucky here to have no neighbors. The other thing is the, to note with the Fakirs is the stronghold is very expensive, 10 coins. The usual price for a stronghold is the same as this, six coins, so four workers and six coins, but this is 10. So we'll have to manage our coins. And I think there's plenty of coins in the bonus tile, so we should be okay. And the building the stronghold allows us to use the carpet flight um, going over two hexes rather than just one. We need to use a priest to do that. Is the priest bonus card available? It's not. So we will build a temple in round one to make sure we've got plenty of priest income. So Fakirs would probably be better if the priest bonus card was available, but as we have lots of scoring tiles here, we can still potentially get a good score if we can manage to secure this central peninsula, this spot here, we can carpet flight over to some places here. From here, carpet flight over to here, over to here, potentially a second town here. Mm, but there's three hexes that are easy to, to develop here. The other, the other factions could be the, um, well, the mermaids tend to like the eastern side of the board and the um, engineers tend to like central and sorry mermaids tend to like the western side of the board this is the western side goodness me and the uh, engineers tend to like the eastern side of the board and central so this central um, gray spot here and here tends to be a favorite opening for the uh, engineers and the Oran will tend to form towns down here and and here and potentially somewhere up here as well or, or, or even down here but uh, so that's really not going to interfere with us here and maybe the Oran will be a good neighbor for us and also the um or the other factions too the uh um, engineers and also possibly the uh mermaids so we've got a i think we've got a good selection of factions here um to play the um back here so let's see see how we go we'll select our first dwelling spot here um, hoping that we can get an Oran neighbor here yeah okay so we'll get that I think we're going to get um, an engineer neighbor for our other one here okay Oran have gone right up the top they don't want to be our neighbor straight away which is it's quite strange of the AI and the engineers are playing playing ball here so we can go here and have an, a neighbor in the engineer Oren, please go here they'll probably go over here though yep that's where they've gone so they're going to form a town here and uh, i'm going to go here so at least i have one neighbor not particularly great but yeah it's uh not the easiest faction to play so getting too many neighbors might not be that easy okay so what's going to be left for me maybe we should go for the power yep power and shipping is the one to go for here um, we won't be using the shipping but if we had this we wouldn't be using the uh, victory points perhaps we could go for that to take it away from the mermaids but then we might be passing out before the mermaids but if we're not we'll take this stop the mermaids getting it because we're not going to be using that shipping anyway so the mermaids can score big with that scoring tile not so much earlier in the game but uh, certainly later they can upgrade their shipping to level five so three points per shipping level 
they can potentially get 15 points for holding that uh, um, that scoring tile. So we're going first. We have an option. We have eight power in bowl two, which allows us to do a single dig. We really want to get a temple, um, but I'd rather build my temple here rather than here, because here is it's not going to be contributing towards a town. So if I do a single dig first and put a dwelling on here, and then we can upgrade that one to a temple and hope that Earth one still remains. So we're going to take the single dig for four power, which means we need to burn four power. So we now have, we burned four power from bowl two and uh, moved four power to bowl three, which we spent back down into bowl one. So we have eight power in bowl one, where we originally had 12 power um, in total. So let's terraform the brown hex to yellow and put a dwelling on there which next time we can upgrade to a trading post and the following turn we can upgrade to a temple which will require um, eight coins and four workers which we have easily so okay so the Oran take the uh, priest power action and the mermaids would have probably taken that priest but they can't now so they have built rather an expensive dwelling, which will cost them six coins. Very expensive. You need to be building, uh, sorry, that's not dwelling, that's a trading post. You need to be building a trading post adjacent to, to another player, then they will only cost you three coins, two workers and three coins, rather than two workers and six coins, which is why I made sure I got this next to the engineers rather than, the, uh, than, than digging the red one. So therefore, now when I build my trading post, it will only cost me two workers and three coins rather than six that the mermaid just paid. Okay, so next time we will be paying uh, two workers and five coins to build a temple here. And after building a temple, we can choose a favor tile and I want to go for the, the Earth One favor tile. Perhaps later in the game I could get water one because I think the final round is a trading post scoring round. Let's just check round. Oh no, final round is dwelling. So having the earth one, certainly. We could get water one because in round five, we get extra points for building uh, trading posts. So we might be maximizing our trading posts in round five and then putting a spattering of uh, dwellings out in round six. But uh, priority now is to get earth one because it's always competitive and of course we're going to be with any luck laying lots of dwellings in the game so we got four points oh my goodness what's going on there is there something hiding behind that mermaid or something it looks like there's a bug <laughs> it looks like there's a bug in the app the app and there's some other faction icon hiding behind the mermaid's one has the mermaid built Yes, the mermaids have built a um, temple and they've taken Earth One. Maybe it's just me, but it looks like somebody's hiding behind that mermaid. Anyway, I've had it before that there's been uh, some funny character hiding behind, um, hiding behind uh, an another icon. But here it's not so clear, but I've certainly had it happen before. Okay, so we've got our Earth One here secured. So every time we build a dwelling, we're going to get two points. And what I plan to do is get the red and the red with a double dig. And uh, that will be in a dwelling scoring round, which is in round three. So next time, next go. With any luck, this green spot would have been taken maybe by the engineers, but the engineers are messing around here, building a bridge. What are they planning? No use to build a bridge at this time. You engineers should be building two temples. Okay, so now there's nothing else I can do in this round. So I'm aiming to build my stronghold in round four. So I have to watch my coin economy. Um, so yeah, building a trading post next go would be very useful, but building a trading post is very difficult considering the situation that, uh, well, I could build it here. Maybe I would consider to do that. 
and that will give me at least some kind of coin income. But let's uh, see what's available with bonus cards here. So all the major coin ones are taken, but we've got the power, that's useful. So there's no way I can hold on another round to see if they relinquish the four or the six coins, but it's not necessary as yet. We can go for the three power, an extra coin, and ship, excuse me, shipping, which I don't need. Okay, so we now have six coins going into round two, which is, it's okay, but it's gonna run out fairly soon because my coin income is zero, worker income is three. And as that stronghold in round four is so expensive, we need to make sure we've got enough coins. So trading post next turn. And we need to leech, here we are, perfect timing. We're just leeching now because the engineers finally have built their trading post here and we have a two power building and a one power building next to it. So we can leech three power at the expense of two victory points. So we will take that and start moving our power into bowl two and then bowl three so that uh, we will be able to do at least a double dig in round three to get the red hex here and the red hex here. Okay, so let's watch what the others do. Mermaids, what did they get? Okay, the Oren got the shipping bonus card, so good the mermaids didn't grab that. But everyone's shipping level is fairly similar now, zero or one. Not as if the mermaids have a three, four or five level shipping at this, this time. So them taking that shipping bonus is not so important to them so early in the game anyway. Okay, so we have six power in bowl two, two power in bowl one, so it's moving up nicely. We still need to do some leeching, which we will do when the uh, engineers develop this. So they're gonna develop this trading post into a temple, which will give us another three power. If we were to build our trading post now, it would be four power at the expense of three victory points, which I don't want really to lose three victory points. But anyway, the most important, so I won't build this uh, trading post now anyway, I'll leave it as three power that I have that I'm going to leech when they do this, when they move this, they upgrade this into a temple. But this priest here is very important now because I can take advantage of the cults. There's bound to be uh, some three cult steps here. So we've got three of these three places. So now's a very important time at the beginning of round two because temples were built at the beginning of round one to see if there's any uh, cult steps left to take, especially if you're the first player. So we'll just check the bonuses, remembering that uh, the earth cult has a dig bonus, which is very useful for me at the end of this round. And then there are two blue. This will also be useful for me, the two blue, and this is useful too. So, but we're gonna prioritize the earth or the water. So yeah, if I, this one's been taken. So we're gonna go for the earth and that will send us to four, which means at the end of this round, we're gonna get ourselves a free dig. What will that mean? That will mean that we can dig either the red, this red or this red, meaning next turn we don't need to take the double dig, a single dig will, will do, and that will leave us in a um, spending less of this power on digs. We can still take the double dig if we want to. So we're going to throw our priest into this three spot so that we get the double dig at the end of the round for being four steps up the earth cult. So let's put it in now. Okay, so now we're on step four of the Earth Cult. We get a bit more power um, because we passed the one power marker on here. So we get one. If we can go a little bit further up, we'll get to two more power. Okay, so that sent more power into ball two. Our power income is zero, but when we build a trading post, either here or, or here if we have a neighbor by then, which we won't. Um, okay, so what's that going to be? Yeah, here we are, they've, my goodness, what? <laughs> All right, so we've got our three power and the engineers have built a stronghold. 
which means they will score for this three points bonus for each, uh, at the end of each round for this bridge. That's what they're thinking, but it's not a good uh, opening for the engineers. They're much better to go for one or two. Two temples is the best opening for the engineers in the first round. So not going for the stronghold, going for temples in round one. So I've got four workers and six coins, so I can build uh, I can build a trading post here to increase my coin income. I'm going to save this. Um, yes, if I take something like, say, if I take the coins now, I'm going to be burning two power from bull two, and I'm going to reduce my power down to six. I think it's not necessary at this time, so. Although it's tempting to increase the coins that way, I'm going to go for the trading post here. And the engineers leached three power because their stronghold has a power value of three. I could also take the single dig now, but as next round is the dwelling scoring round, I'm going to leave that and plan to build dwellings next round and do the digging next round as that's the so I can just leech more power into our next round, basically. Although I won't actually be leeching power because I don't have any neighbors. And the Oren, who, if it was a human opponent, would have dug this and given me some more power. Um, the AI is just dotting structures around. So there's not anything else I need to do. I would like to, yeah, that's all I can really do in this go. We're gonna get the free dig, so we can choose which, which of these two hexes to terraform. Um, so we're gonna pass out of this round and see what's available. Oh, we have the coins, that's useful. So we've got these coins and the, and the uh, step in the cults, which will give us an extra two power, yeah. So we've got seven coins here, five and a cult step. I'm going for the five and the cult step. Um, next round is dwelling round. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have enough. Hmm. Five coins, 10 coins. Next round I'll have 10 coins. Build two dwellings, that will be down to six coins. So I need to have a four coin income for the a minimum to build my strongholds. I think I can do that. I think that's realistic. So we'll take the five coins rather than the seven and the cult step, which will give us an extra couple of power if we move in the right. Say we say we're to move in the earth cult, we would get two power, but any of the others we wouldn't unless we get um, this three spot. Okay, so far, so good. So four workers and 10 coins at the end of round two. So if we wanted to, we could build the stronghold um, at the end of this round. I'm just thinking a better place to build the stronghold would be in this town area, but it would be so expensive to develop this uh, dwelling into a trading post at the moment that uh, I couldn't really do that. Do I want to use my free shovels? Of course I do. So we're gonna terraform, which one is? Yeah, this one could be taken by the engineers. So, but they aren't gonna take it. If it was a human opponent, it could well have been taken already. But we terraform that just to show that we do have half a clue what is going on. Um, do give the AI a little bit of respect. A human opponent, uh, engineer player would have terraformed that a long time ago, I think. But uh, we're dealing with the AI here. Okay, so we have five power in bowl two three power in bowl three we only need a single dig so perhaps that's what we should take but is anybody else going to take that single dig not at the moment which means i can play my priest but this is the this is the dwelling round so i intend to build a dwelling here a dwelling here 
Now what I could do is use the priest to build a dwelling here by doing the carpet flight action rather than putting the priest in the cults. And that will score me more points. As this is the dwelling round or a dwelling round, the final dwelling round will be in round six, I should do that. So what I'm gonna do is put a dwelling down this time here. Oh, that will give the engineers three power, but they're not gonna be able to leech another power to get the single dig. So I'm safe enough to do this. They will leech the three power. There we are. So they have one power in ball two. So they can't take that single dig action because it costs four power. And they only have three power and they're not gonna, nobody else is gonna give them any leech. So I can take the single dig action next time. Um, nobody else has any power to do it, so. Yeah, I mean, of course I'm doing that in the hope that I would leech a bit of power, but I could have also analyzed this and realized that I'm not actually gonna leech anything um, because the Oran is still not going to dig here anyway. Sometimes they do like to use three workers to dig, but even if the Oran did use three workers to dig, they only have three workers, so they wouldn't be building a dwelling here anyway. So uh, I could have just taken that single dig last go. All right, so we take the single dig now, burn one power to do that because we only had three power in bowl three. So we had to burn some power from bowl two, stick the dwelling down here. Now we have a nice um, four hexes um, claimed here to form a town. Okay, so next time we're going to do a carpet flight and put another dwelling down here. Um, not an easy place to form a town. And that's one of the weaknesses I think of the fact is. <clears throat> the second town, yeah, even here's three hexes. Perhaps going up here would be an option. So if I'm throwing a dwelling down here, it's just for points. It's not as if, and obviously the, the, the income I get from it, but uh, it's not as if it's contributing to a second town. I could get the brown and do a double dig here and build a sanctuary that would be an option because i do have a neighbor the black is a double dig i think black is a double dig yep black is a double dig we can see here black to yellow is a double dig so we could do a three hex town um, but i'd have to have a very good economy to do that the thing is we're going to be scattering dwellings across to do the carpet flight um, it doesn't really keep the dwellings together to make towns, but at least we've got one town centrally located, which gives us access to other places around the board. Okay, so let's see, what was our plan? Oh yes, to carpet flight over to here, potentially commencing the construction of a second town location here. So eight points there minus the cost of resources. Cost of resources would be one point, so seven points. Oh no, it would be one point, one and a third point. So because of the priest as well as the uh, one worker and two coins, three resources is one point. So in a minute, we will check their projected final scores. But at the end of round three, it's pretty much... Uh, Difficult really to, to say who's going to, what kind of score you're going to get in comparison to others by looking at the projected finals. <clears throat> okay, let's have a look at the projected final scores. I'm projected to get 76 points and win mainly because at the moment I'm winning the longest network. I do think I will win the longest network um, and also doing quite well in these two cults, but I think that could change quite quickly. The Oran are quite strong in the cults, but the other factions, not so much. All right, so now I should make sure I don't make any silly mistakes. Next go is the 
stronghold. So I'm going to need 10 coins. That's what I really need to focus on here. So we've got four left over from this round and we've got income of two from this uh, trading post. So let's see what bonuses are available. Bingo. Obviously we'll take that. So pass out of, whoops. We still have our bonus cult step, but we are not going to take it. That would be very silly because obviously then the mermaids would take the coins. They have zero coins and zero coin income. The engineers have zero coins and zero coin income. <laughs> so I think we should not worry about our cult step. The advantage of having the cult step though is if I did need to hold on another round, to uh, wait for somebody else to give up um, a favor tile, I could do, but I'm not going to. It's not worth losing that because the mermaids are going to pass out of the round now and take, or oh, they're uh, spending power to build a bridge. Where did they build their bridge? Call yourself an AI. What are you doing? What are you doing? Mermaids will build a bridge here, but mermaids building a bridge there. Let's see what they do. <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay, so the income phase in round four, where we need to build our stronghold. Now, ideally, I wouldn't be building the stronghold here. I would be building it in the town. So let's see. Yes, I just need one coin to do it in the town. And that means I will finish the town. What I need is to get a training post, which I can do now here, which will cost me two workers. So I'll still have four workers left over, which I require, but it will cost me three coins. And of course I need, I need 10 coins left over. So I'll be one coin short. So what I can do is I really want to hold on to this priest for the carpet flight actions later in the game where I'm going to sort of jump over to these places. One, two, three. This yellow won't be taken. So I want to hold on to this. I don't want to throw that into a cult track to get power, but I can burn power to get the extra coin if I haven't leached it by that time. It's possible that the Oren will dig this spot here and give me three leech, which will send one power into ball three, which I can convert to a coin. But all I need to do now is build a trading post. And then if the Oren dig it, I'll get four power, which, is, which will uh, send two power into ball three. Because I've upgraded here, we have two structures worth two power now. <clears throat> Okay, so far so good. I'm not an expert Fakir player. I've never really uh, played them competitively. I've played them a few times against the AI, which has improved my game a bit. But as I say, it's a very particular setup you need for the Fakirs and uh, I don't think that setup really comes around that often. I suppose when I get more confidence in playing them, especially with uh, in this app where they have uh, adjusted initial scores and adjusted starting scores. I think the fact is start with, I don't know, is it 27 or 33 points, something like that. I think it might be 33 then uh, the, the number of situations where you could play the fact is would obviously be a, bit, be a lot higher. So I suppose it just comes down to not having neighbors and a rough, uh, a few rounds where you can uh, build the structures that correspond to the, the round scoring bonuses. But uh, yeah, it's interesting to try out the Fakirs a bit more because it's good to have that kind of uh, trick up your sleeve if you need it. You know, sometimes the, all the good races for the certain situation have been taken and you just don't dare take a, the Fakirs because you haven't played them enough, haven't got enough experience. So yeah, I'm uh, playing them a few times against the AI, um, certainly worthwhile, especially playing on the app with a balanced scoring. Okay, so now I can build my stronghold with, by burning um, one power from here to get the extra coin to make 410. 
and we will complete the town. So let's just check out what, yeah, we could really power, power up in these cults. Um, but later in the game, I don't intend to really continue competing in these cults because I'm going to be using my priests for the cult track. So that's a tough one. Let's get the town complete. Look at my income. So we won't look at that. Look at the income at the moment. Four workers, two coins. My coin income has gone back down to two because I've converted a trading post to a temple. Sorry, no, <laughs> a, a trading post to uh, a stronghold. So uh, my coin income is low. Next round, I need to be building some trading posts. Now, where would I build them without neighbor a neighbor here so engineers really need to build next to me but i don't trust that they are going to do that so i'd have to build a dwelling out here so i'm going to need some coins now i have the best coin bonus here my power situation is not great for getting coins as yet but there are you know a, one or two coins available here but i'm thinking of just going for the the coins on this because i've just spent 10 that will uh <sighs> <I can> sneeze <coughs> excuse me <laughs> okay i've just spent uh so i've just uh, spent 10 coins so uh, by getting this town tile and getting the six coins that will balance my economy next time for building a dwelling and a trading post. Ah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a problem that I don't have another temple. Another temple would be wonderful because it would get me, yeah, they're all going for this water one, obviously, because next round is the um, bonus round for trading posts. So you build a trading post, you're going to get six points, the three from here and then the three from the favor tile. And then if you hold the, um, if you hold this tile, you're going to get eight, another two points. So potentially eight points. So this, this favor tile is golden. So I'm going to take that if it's next time, I'm going to grab that. So I've got my six coins. Let's see, the others are going to pass out of the round and grab that before me because that is gold okay engineers don't pass out now these guys will but they've got three priests they could put down but they've passed out and taken the shipping which will give them nine points so that's very good for those guys and the orange still can do some stuff you know maybe they will dig this okay priest to the cult tracks so I can pass out of the round, I'll keep my priest, um, and that will boost any trading post score. And of course I get the two coins and the one worker. So that's pretty good, better than the dwellings, I think. Um, first of all, yeah, we're gonna have at least two trading posts at the end of here. So we're gonna go over here and build a trading post. So, yep, I think that's the way to play it. So that's what we'll do. Okay, check the power. Power's no problem. Sometimes you need to do a conversion here to stop wasting power when you uh, receive your power income. But my power income is only one thanks to this trading post. So I'm not gonna be anywhere near losing any power but it's just a force of habit. Check the power before you pass out of the round. Just like that, the uh, um, engineers just wasted power by uh, putting the priest in the cult track without uh, converting power to coins first or, convert or taking a power action. Okay, so we can leech power now. Three, four, two, we will take that. 
six power now in ball two. It will be five one at the beginning beginning of next round. Engineers again leached one power. What did they do? Yeah, they wasted power anyway. I'm not sure exactly how. Engineers take the coins and just the Oren to finish this round. I don't think they're going to be doing anything else. Yes, they are building a dwelling over there. Wish they would come and build a dwelling next to me here for next round. Then I could build some trading posts. So I think going for another town would be possible, but maybe not the way to go. I would certainly have to have a ready for a double dig now or get lots of digs from the, uh, yeah, I don't think pack ears are really going to be getting uh, cult bonus digs more than what I've got. I got one earlier in the game where I terraformed this one. Okay, so we've got three priests. Um, and next round, the final round is the dwelling. So dwelling scoring round. So I'll have five priests. One, oh, actually, uh, one, mm, two, three, or just two, and one this round. So I don't need so many priests. I can send some to the cult tracks. I'm not going to get to stage four on this track to take advantage of the round five dig bonus here. So I can just make myself stronger in one of these two cults. I think we should focus on, or well, even this is very tempting, but I think we should make the earth cult a bit stronger and we can get two power for that, bringing us four power in bowl two. Okay, so far so good. We'll check the projected final scores. I'm projected to get 92 at the moment. So we still don't have a neighbor for our dwellings. Oh, we do down here. Yes, we do. So we can save this spot. We can save this spot for next go. So next go, one, two, three. And I think we can get through to here four. And we might be able to dig there and go here. So we'll get rid of one of these dwellings and turn it into a trading post. And we have the trading post bonus tile. So that gets an extra two points. So five minus the cost of the resources, which is almost two. It's, uh, it's one and two thirds of a point cost of resources. because it's five resources and six resources is uh, two points. Okay, so I'm going to hold on to the priests. So I'll have four priests in the final round. And I still have four power in bolt, bolt three. So by the time it comes to the final round, I'll have six power in bolt three, enabling the double dig. And I think that might be my best option to do this carpet flight. So now, can I build another trading post? I can't. Let's just see what's available. Now we have hoo, 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 the this scoring card. So with two power income, send six into here, we will have a good little setup for scoring some points in this final round. So we'll exchange our bonus cards, take the dwelling one with an extra three coins, get our four bonus, see how that affects the, <laughs> now we're sort of second to the Auron because mainly because of the longest network. And we're obviously going to build lots of dwellings in the next go, maximum of six dwellings.
and uh, the dwellings that I use the carpet flight to build, I'll get four points for the carpet flight. I will get four points for the dwelling plus an extra point at the end of the game. So if I had, well, I'm not going to work it out now, but um, obviously we're going to be scoring well. So we've been focusing a lot of the game on these, uh, really this last round. So we only have two dwellings on the board and a potential to build six. So we're just looking to see which of those yellow spots could be snatched. I don't think any of them will be taken, um, but I'm gonna get this one first, just in case. But uh, the engineers are not going to take it because they've got zero workers. Is there a way to get across to this one? Yeah, a carpet flight here, one dig, one dig, and then here, that would be possible. But I, yeah, oh, don't need to leech any power. Yeah, just notice mermaids uh, terraform this to blue, thinking when a dwelling goes on there, we won't need to leech any power. We've got all our power in bowl six. Okay, so just think about the order. We're going to need these four priests. The six power, we can do our digging. Mm. We could go here, enabling a carpet flight to here. We can leave that because nobody else is going to take that double dig. And we can take the carpet flights that are easily available first. So four points for the carpet flight, four points for the dwelling, and then an extra point at the end of the game because we hold the dwelling bonus card. Here. Here. I think we can get through to here. Here's possible with a dig. Here would be possible with a dig, but I can't do them both at the same time, but I'm thinking of getting through to there. I'd have to use three workers, which I don't have, or a single dig, double dig, but I can't do that. When you have six power in both three, so I can do the double dig. I could go here. I could double dig this and get across to there. That would be the way to go. So we'll get this one under our control. Don't think I, yeah, I do. Don't need to go there. I don't have another priest anyway. So just trying to read the board anyway for future times when I play the Fakirs, I can see, I can read the board a lot clearer if I thought about it. Okay, so we don't need to, we can't leech anything there. So eventually the Oran don't go there. It's the mermaids who take that spot. How are we doing for the longest network? We are still joint with the mermaids, but we're projected to win the game. Okay, so now we're gonna go here. And it'll be interesting to see whether we can jump over to there. I think we probably can, that's two hexes. So why wouldn't we be able to? Yeah, just think about where to do the double dig. Yeah. Just two single dig locations here. Or I could go here, do the double dig now, which will release that spot. Yeah, one, two, three. I don't think it makes any difference. Yeah, but we don't won't have a priest. So we will go here now. We'll double dig that. That's the one to do. Double or double dig here, or do one of the digs here, one here, and that will release the third spot here to get three dwellings down. Because I just noticed we've got one more priest, so we need to be a bit careful about this. Okay, one dig done here, and we've laid a dwelling. 
Do I want to place a dwelling? Yes. And other spade, we do this spot here, grab that and send that to, terraform that to yellow. Okay. And with, there's two more dwellings we can lay. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven, eight, and no priests. No, nope, we don't want that leech. Okay, so decline that. Engineers finished. Mermaids, three more. Oh dear, so that means I'm not going to do well in the cults. But what do you expect? Okay. Um, do I want to give anyone any leech? Um, don't want to give mermaids any leech, but both of these two places both give them one leech, so it doesn't make any difference. Just four points for that. Actually, five take away the cost of the resources, so four points. And lose a place on the air cult there. The cult situation. I don't think I'm going to really contest the cults in the future when I'm Fakirs. What I would do is just go for maybe an early cult bonus or something like a dig, which is pretty much what I did this go and got a bit more power, didn't I? Um, but really, it's the cult bonuses that you try and work for with one or two priests, and that's it, because the priests are so much more valuable for doing the carpet flight. So we've put down all of our dwellings, eight dwellings gone down. So we really maximized our sort of dwelling scoring in that final round. And that's it. There's nothing else I can do. So we'll pass out of that, get the extra eight bonuses for eight dwellings and see what the score is after the mermaids have laid their dwelling. Maybe they will get the bonus as well, the uh, um, a dwelling here. What are they? Not a dwelling, a priest. Or convert it to points. What are they going to do? points okay so we finish with 125 so of all the uh videos i've made so far this is the lowest score but it's with the fakirs um how could we've got a higher score with the fakirs maybe not in this game but uh, with other setups it would be interesting to know so if you know the perfect setup for the fakirs please leave the comments and, and let me know in the comments below uh, and uh yeah or it's interesting to to learn how to play um, another race, especially a weaker race like the Fakirs that tends to get avoided by uh, beginner players. So yeah, 125, Mermaids 97, and also the Oran 97, and the Engineers 63. So guys, if you made it this far, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Being posted in the first round. Okay, so let's get the temple and grab Earth 1. I think I'll be the second player to get it. I think the dwarves have probably got there already. <laughs> I think this is a bug. I think that's, uh, is that a yeti or something? <laughs> I think that's a bug. Sometimes you find uh, random uh, people occupying favor tile positions. I mean, this faction is not even in the game. <laughs> it's, uh... All right, so we're we'll plonk, uh, we're we'll just... Oh, just like <laughs> oh dear! I hope I can. Uh, I hope I can get this video out. I hope I don't really fluff up this game and not be able to put the video out. That is that is fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna get we're gonna get this favor tile, the Earth One. I don't think I've ever seen that before. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'll just leave that there for a bit. Maybe I want to take that as an animation <laughs> to use as a <laughs> to use as my avatar or something like that. <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll grab that.